so I know there, this story has been going around, uh, go, going around the independent circles uh, as of late. But uh, there has been an AP journalist that got fired uh, because she uh, was in a pro-Palestine student group at Stanford where she went to co- uh, where she went to college. Right. Emily Wilder, she got fired. Uh, this was revealed by some conservative group. I think I think the Stanford Republicans uh, maybe was the was the group that um, that that revealed this. Uh, and she got fired, right? And uh, this comes right after, right after Israel uh, blew up a basically a news building, a news slash resident resident building. Uh, AP was there, AJ Plus was there, and then the rest of it was, you know, just residents, just average regular people, you know. And they said they did this because. Hamas, which, you know, it's 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 like the country that cried Hamas. That's basically what Israel is. Right. Uh, and, and our corporate media never acknowledges the fact that Hamas is the uh, the governing body in Palestine in 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 the set- settlements of Palestine in Gaza. Like that's that's that is the governing. Body. So what you did is a political attack, but they don't recognize Palestine as a state and they don't recognize Hamas is a government. They claim that they're terrorists. And this is uh, validated by uh, U.S. media, Israeli media. Uh, and um, and again, you know, AP basically fired somebody for not falling in line with the U.S. propaganda and the Israeli propaganda. Right. Like, that's what they're doing. They're 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 like, yeah, Hamas, bad people blow up our offices. <laughs> They're like, it's fine. It, do you need to blow up the one in the states? We'll we'll give everybody a twenty minute, twenty minute head start to get out. We'll shut down the elevators. It's survival of the fittest, motherfuckers. That's what journalism has become. It's become it's become the Hunger Games. <laughs> That's what it's become. This is dangerous on. Many different levels, many different levels. This basically shows you that uh, companies can fire you based on your belief system. And in this instance, you know, I, I for, uh, look, for, first of all, journalists should be unbiased. They shouldn't have a political affiliation. They shouldn't be affiliated with a religious organization. They shouldn't be affiliated with uh, a nation state. Uh, they should be affiliated with the truth. They should be affiliated with getting the objective truth out there to people. Now, if that means the objective truth is reporting on a, quote, democracy, which I'm using that in quotes, uh, because Israel is not a democracy and neither is America. Israel is a theocracy and America is, is provably an, uh, and, uh, a, a corporate oligarchy that feigns to be a democracy, right? Um, you know, so you shouldn't have a bias to these countries. As a journalist, your job is to say, yes, this so-called democracy is committing uh, war crimes because they blew up a news building. That's that's not that's not what you like. Normal countries don't fucking do this. The only reason you want to get rid of journalists is because you're trying to fucking hide some shit. That's the only reason you want to get rid of journalists. People don't get rid of journalists just, you know, oh, it's a Tuesday. Better kill. You know, it's just not something random that they fucking do. They do it for a very specific reason. And countries that kill journalists are usually pretty authoritarian. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to argue that. It's just really hard to argue that. <laughs> you know, like actual democracies aren't like, boy, we believe in freedom of the press, but we also believe in killing that freedom of the press. That's our freedom, baby. Our freedom is to control narratives and tell you what to believe in. <laughs> democracies don't do that. They just don't. And if somebody says that that's acceptable for a democracy, uh, then that person is is very likely uh, probably a CIA agent. 
and you should stop trusting that person. If somebody is reasonably making any sort of justification for the explosion of and the destruction of journalists, the destruction of civilians, the destructions of hospitals, schools, um, you know, uh, emergency services, that person is probably with the CIA and you should immediately stop being friends with them uh, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, not invite them to any of uh, any of the holidays, especially if they show up to the holidays and they're like, hey, did you guys uh, commit any crimes, any socialists in the house? If 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 somebody is opening Thanksgiving dinner with with something like that, then uh, go ahead and and stop being friends with that person. Because they're from the CIA. But this is dangerous, you know. You can get fired for what you believe in. That's crazy. Regardless of whether you agree with the ideology or not, you know, it, it's it's always one side or the other. I, I, I remember people celebrating um, after, you know, Charlottesville, after that awful thing of what happened in Charlottesville where uh, people who were uh, revealed to be white supremacists were getting fired from their jobs. And I was like, man, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a slippery slope. You know, I hate to use a, a cliched phrase here, but that is kind of a slippery slope because, you know, what's next? Oh, you're a socialist that believes in uh, organized labor. Fired. Because the corporation doesn't believe in in organized labor, they think that co organized labor is uh, far too dangerous, or or it's uh, it'll detract from the it'll detract from the uh, um, you know the profits of the bosses. Fired. That doesn't seem fair, right? Especially if that person that believes in organized labor was doing a, a damn fine job at their at at their work. Fortunately, the same with the racist. There, there's there's a, a gentleman that, that I work with now that I probably disagree with on, on a multitude of levels. Where's an NRA hat? You know, is it seems like he's a pretty conservative dude from what I've from 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 uh the little I've talked to him, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't line up with his belief system, but guess what? He he's pretty fucking good at his job. So firing him for what you believed in, what he believes in when when his beliefs don't affect the the work, right? His beliefs don't affect the work. So why why would you fire him? Uh, because you're being discriminatory at that point. Now this is the same thing. Um, Emily Wilder was she a bad journalist? Was she turning in you know uh, stories without sources? Uh, was she uh, was she turning in fucking you know, just half-assed uh, with a bunch of grammar errors. You know, she she drew a little picture, um, which uh, honestly, if you're if you're a journalist and you draw a little picture, a satirical cartoon in the middle of your article, who's going to complain about that? that's just that's just great. That's just breaking up the article. You know, if you write a thousand-word article, this is America. You want Americans to read it. You got to put a little cartoon in there. You know, maybe throw a dick joke in there. Maybe throw draw draw like like on one side you draw a pair of boobs and then on the other side you draw a very anatomically correct penis. Everybody's like, "Wow!" I mean, I was very bored, but then paragraph three, boom, titties and dongs, bam, I'm in, I'm back in, I'm back into this article. We're nailing it. But if she wasn't making grammatical errors, she wasn't you know, uh, citing her sources, she wasn't, she was just making shit up. Then, yeah, you can, you can fire her. But for, for, for firing her because she's pro-Palestinian after Israel blew up their offices in Gaza is just, it's authoritarian. You committed a war crime. Firing her because she was pro-Palestinian and a pro-Palestinian activist in college is even fucking worse. It just shows you that she knows how to talk to people. Like she has connections into the activism world. So you can get, you know, better stories. You can get more accurate stories. You can get stories with a with a deeper perspective in mind. Like, why would you not want that? But this harkens back to Chris Hedges. Like they've been doing this to journalists forever. Uh, Ed, uh, uh, is it Ed Fallon? Is that, is that correct? 
Um, he was on MSNBC. If if I get the name wrong, please do correct me in the comment section. Uh, but Ed Fallon, I, I believe his name was Ed Fallon. He was an MSNBC uh, correspondent and and wanted to cover uh, Bernie San Bernie Sanders rallies. And MSNBC said no, and he was like, "I'm gonna fucking do it anyway," and they fired him for that because he believed that what Bernie was doing needs to be covered, needs to be shown so that people learn how to create a grassroots campaign within a, within a duopoly and succeed, right? Which is what Bernie was doing. Now, Bernie has a lot of problems, but he did do that pretty well. And he did inspire a lot of other people to do that. Uh, whether they turned into Democratic Party shills or not, I don't think that's for Bernie to decide. He did kind of turn into a little bit of a Democratic Party sheepdog. Uh, Ed Schultz. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate that. Ed Schultz. Why did I call him Ed Fallon? I don't even know who Ed Fallon is. Um, is Ed Fallon an actor? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Ed Schultz. Ed Schultz is the gentleman. Uh, he got fired for, for what he believes in. Chris Hedges, same thing. Chris Hedges did too good of a job being a fucking journalist in Iraq that the New York Times fired him. He, he covered what the fuck was actually going on and talked to like the people in Iraq. And they fired him. This happens all the time, right? And it sets this precedent that you can get rid you can get rid of people for what they believe in, and it sets a precedent that uh, you have to believe in 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 the paradigm that starts in this corner and this corner. Anything outside of this is unacceptable. It's the same. It's the same thing that corporate media pitches, right? If you want to be on corporate media, uh, with their with their millions of viewers and so on and so forth, if you want to get your message amplified to that level, then you have to be between this line and this line. If you're outside of that, go fuck yourself. Like that's how corporate media operates. And now we're saying that's applicable for for jobs. But this, the bigger aspect of this is I think it shows you corporate bias, right? It shows you how biased corporate media really is. It shows you that corporate media, Associated Press, AP, lines, lines up with the political ideology of the U.S. empire and the Israeli empire. They're fine with Israeli colonialism. They're fine with U.S. imperialism. So they'll they'll take their orders from those governments. These these guys are not doing journalism. They're doing state sponsored propaganda. Because because their messaging is approved. By the state, and if it's not approved by the state, then it doesn't get printed or it doesn't go up online. And if you try to push back, you'll get the same result as Emily Wilder, which is you'll get fired. Destroying news outlets is a war crime. But again, the Israelis don't care. The IDF fires at journalists. They shoot at journalists. With the, you know, they wear fucking vests that say journalists on them. But that's okay. America is fine with that because America also fires at journalists. America also tries to imprison journalists. That's what they that's what they're trying to do with Julian Assange. They want to get him into Admax in Colorado. It's one of the worst fucking maximum security prisons in in America. So they're fine with this. So this is accepted. And they will make rationales. They will make justifications. False justifications, false rationales, but they will make those. And our job um, as as uh, as informed citizens or or would be informed citizens uh, or critically thinking, free thinking citizens should be pushing back on that fucking rhetoric, should be pushing back on state sponsored propaganda. These are not democracies. These are not how democracies operate. Democracies don't, you know, um, champion journalists getting killed. They don't. Cha they don't champion blowing up fucking news buildings. They don't champion getting rid of jur silencing journalists. They don't champion imprisoning journalists. 
These are not what democracies do. These are what authoritarian governments do. And you can have capitalist authoritarians. You can have theocratic authoritarians. You can have communist authoritarians. Authoritarianism is is not exclusive just to fucking... I mean, they kind of make you think that we're all only communists or... No. We're living in a crypto-fascist nation right now. It's not that hard to see. You just have to be willing to open your eyes and look around and critically examine the society you live in. Let's look at your comments. Is CG still want to fight me? Did she? Is she still trying to? Yeah, she's shadow boxing. <laughs> I know you'd win. I'm a pacifist, damn it. I. <laughs> Freedom of association is is that is that actually something? Is freedom of something of association actually is something? Um, because I I was not aware of it, but but I do think freedom of the press applies to this. Um, freedom of expression applies to a lot of this too. Is is I think you know there there is this notion that journalists are supposed to be you know these these uh, unfeeling whatever like well, very stoic. This is the news, and I'm reporting the news. Hello, this is Dan Rather. I have no emotions. I don't smile. I don't feel hatred. I have a blank look on my face because I am the blank face of the news, right? Like, they're, they're supposed to be that way, but how can you look at what's happening in in Palestine to, to Palestinians and not go, this is fucked, this is fucked, all of this is fucked. Why is everybody not saying this is fucked all the time? Uh, Holly says Biden will meet with Palestinian authority, uh, authority, I think Hamas was elected. Do you think he'll actually meet with Hamas? <laughs> that would be so funny if he actually did. Like, I would love to see I would love to see Biden meet with Hamas and Netanyahu's fucking head explode. That would be so funny. <laughs> the only democracy in the Middle East. What do you mean? <laughs> You know what's funny is like they used to have so many democracies in the Middle East, like like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, like Syria. They were all democracies. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man, what a weird, um, uh, what a weird cough that was, huh? <laughs> yeah, they killed journalists, medics, civilians. These are not these are not how democracies operate. Going to keep saying that till it sinks into the populace. Uh, CG says, Thanksgiving for one, no problems here. Unless uh, uh, unless you, your brain is, is telling you things that the CIA would say. At which point, uh-oh, have they infiltrated your brain? Are you really alone? We don't know. We don't know. Are you MK Ultra? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know if you become MK Ultra or not. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel says, and that journalist uh, that was fired is Jewish. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out, uh, because uh, she's Jewish. She's she's a Jewish pro-Palestinian journalist that works for AP. Like that's 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 exactly who she is. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Ba, 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 ba. We talked about Ed Schultz. Uh, maybe I was thinking about Jimmy Fallon. That's why I said Ed Fallon. Uh, CG says ignoring Bernie, uh, particularly at that time, meant rendering all of the U.S. invisible. Uh, their big wet fucking dream. Yeah, they 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 didn't. They felt like well, it it also kind of showed you. You know, one of the other things that I think the momentum behind Bernie's campaign showed you, and really the momentum behind what we're seeing now with with how big the Black Lives Matter movement is, how big the pro-Palestine movement is starting to get now, how many how many people are starting to support Julian Assange. Um, you know, it just kind of showed you that the media no longer dictates the uh, what what people consider right and wrong. Right. And that and that is kind of their big dream. Their dream is to be the perfect propaganda machine. Um, to tell people like th this thought is correct and this thought is wrong and anything outside of this paradigm is just evil and Russian and McCarthy is, you know, it's just they kind of use that kind of stuff. And and Bernie's campaign kind of showed like, yeah, people aren't really listening to corporate media. They don't trust corporate media anymore. 
you know, I think it was like 60% of people at that time were, were, were not trusting corporate media. I think that number has gone up at this point, but it's like, it's a crazy amount of people that don't trust the corporate and, and with good cause. Right. And, and the next segment uh, we'll, we'll kind of cover a little bit more of that too, but, but it did kind of show like, yeah, people are starting to think outside of uh, outside of this corporate media narrative. Like people are starting to get catch wind of the fact that like networks like CNN and MSNBC, Fox News, and even NPR are just trash. <coughs> They're just garbage. So, um, and and like you say, so much is hinging on Julian. Yeah, if 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 Julian gets sent to prison, then okay, there goes there goes objective journalism. It's just all going to be state sponsored propaganda from now on. Uh, ACG also says we have what I call an oligarch Pluto kleptoc cacistocracy with increasing doses of totalitarian and authoritarianism. Uh, I know the first. One, two, three of those. I don't think I know what a cacistocracy is, but that might be a conversation for for a different time. <laughs> um, Sarah over over on the rock fins. Thank you for tuning in, Sarah, and thank you for sending a tip over on the rock fin. I want to remind folks once again if you're if you're watching this on the YouTubes. This week will be the last week that I stream on YouTube. I will uh, I will be putting up the full stream um, after, you know, uh, probably around like 6.30, 7 o'clock uh, uh, the day of the stream. But I won't be doing the live streams on YouTube past this week. So head on over to Rockfin, rockfin.com slash Haha. Make yourself a free account. Uh, the streams are always free over on Rockfin. And then 24 hours later, I put them up as premium. So if you're someone that catches the streams often... Um, there they it, it'll be free. Uh, so yeah, uh, and you can leave tips. You can do a bunch of cool stuff over on the rock fence. They're they're pretty great. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button, and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now. Uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the Merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.